The compact luxury car battle has just hotted up. First came the two series BMW, the Grand Coupe, and now we have the A limousine from Mercedes. Both are beautifully built on the inside, nice to drive, and well equipped. But which car is better? And which one should you, more importantly, put your money on? Since both these front-wheel drive cars are going to be owner-driven, let's start with what makes them so different to drive. And then we look at what the cabins are like and how each brand's approach to the interiors differentiates them here too. The Mercedes seems to be at a disadvantage on paper. The engine makes 150 horsepower, down 40 horsepower on the BMW, and it isn't the smoothest diesel around. Now at idle, it's not difficult to tell this is a diesel, but set off and the motor smoothens up pretty nicely. There's always that hint of a grumble in the background, especially if you're looking for it. But for the most part, refinement is good and the engine is pretty responsive too. Put your foot down and there's an immediate tug and that stays all the way to around 4500 rpm tap the accelerator and it just surges forward and this makes it feel like it has as much thrust as a more powerful bmw and then what helps is this twin clutch gearbox this new eight speed twin clutch gearbox is quick and keeps you in the power band it's pretty nice the tightly packaged gear ratios and the lightning quick shifts mean the Mercedes is quick from a 0 to 100, the run leading just 7.62 seconds, not too far off from the BMW. The gearbox, however, can get a bit hesitant at low speed. Now at lower speeds, this 8-speed gearbox tends to get a bit hesitant and there are a few jerks. The A limo, however, rides superbly. What Mercedes have got spot on on this A limo is the ride. In fact, it would be fair to say it rides like a Mercedes. There's a nice soft and supple layer when you go over some bad bits. It can handle even slightly larger potholes and even bad patches where you would otherwise have to slow down. It rides over them silently and pretty smoothly. No big deflection taking place inside the cabin. Ground clearance, however, can be a bit of an issue. If you have passengers and luggage in the back, you do need to be a bit careful over speed breakers, especially at the rear. The steering, however, is light, it's easy to twirl, and the Merc feels effortless to drive in traffic. The inert steering and the soft suspension, however, don't do it any favors in corners. There's a bit more roll, the steering isn't as connected. And though you have the straight line performance, you'd rather drive it in a relaxed manner. In contrast, the terrier like BMW just loves attacking corners and it feels a lot sharper in the way it drives too. Thing is with the BMW, the harder you drive it, the nicer and more confidence inspiring it gets. The steering has a lot more weight and feel. It feels more poised in corners. It has a bit more grip. And although you can tell the drive goes to the front wheels, this clearly is the better driver's car. The ride on its lower profile tyres and larger 18-inch wheels isn't as good and wheel travel too is less. There's a bit of a stiffer edge to the suspension. It tends to thud over some of the sharper edged bumps. Overall comfort levels however are pretty good and unless you come upon some really bad patches, you don't need to really slow down. 
The BMW also has the smoother engine. So the idle in the BMW is a bit smoother and more silent. And when you take off, yes, you can tell it's a diesel. And it doesn't feel quite as responsive as the Mercedes. Now this engine puts out 190 horsepower and has 400 Nm. And when you smash the throttle down, you can clearly feel the additional performance. Acceleration isn't as dramatic as on the Merc and 0 to 100 comes up in a slightly quicker 7.35 seconds. Also smoother is the 8-speed torque converter equipped automatic. And BMW's gearbox, especially at low speeds and in the city, is clearly smoother. It hardly ever misshifts, there are no lurches or jerks and for the most part, you can't tell what gear you're in. So true to form and their respective brands, Mercedes has made a limo and BMW a sports sedan. I just love that. And this reflects in the way they look too. The A-Class limousine has a low roof, flowing lines, but the new car is clearly less extreme than the earlier generation CLA and all the better for it. The BMW is more aggressive looking. Its angry eyes, toothy grill and proliferation of cuts and creases help it stand out. And I like those L-shaped taillights too and how well they work with the rest of the boot. The BMW draws more attention to itself but it's the Merc that sort of works better. Tell us what you think in the comments below. When it comes to the cabins, again, it's the Merc that has a more luxuriously appointed cabin. So immediately on the inside of the A limousine, a very high quality interior. This soft touch, leather covered dash, the wood trim here, LED lighting, the perforated finish, piano black here, the chrome vents, which you can click and close, they work beautifully. The chrome buttons here, this lovely steering wheel and of course these two flat panels placed in the same plane so it's easy on the eyes. It's an interior that could be on any Mercedes. And it's not just the quality, it's the way the colours have been used and everything has been put together. Now the seat isn't the largest on any Merc and here while it is comfortable and supportive on the thighs the backrest isn't as wide and on longer journeys this could prove to be something you need to keep adjusting however Merc has given you kinetic seats on this version as well so you can switch it on and get these seats to move minutely so that you're kept comfortable you also get a wide center console with wireless charging there's no wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, however, and with two cup holders here and this elbow box, practicality is also pretty good. Since the wheelbase is 41 mm longer than the BMW, there's also more space in the rear. So Mercedes has made sure to give you plenty of leg room. Headroom is good at the back, but you are seated a bit low and you're slightly knees up. So comfort on longer distance drives will not be as good. You get these twist to close vents here, which give you a good amount of airflow. There are two USPs, but there's C-type in the back. And you do get this large sunroof up front too. BMW's chic frameless windows and lower roof make it feel like the sporty of the two on the inside as well. So clearly a sportier and not as overtly luxurious interior as the A limousine. You have the center console turned in the direction of the driver, this extremely sporty steering wheel and these seats, they hug you and can be adjusted to make it feel even nicer and more supportive on the sides. Now material quality isn't too far from the Merc, you get this soft touch dash, the leather on the steering wheel is extremely high quality and you get some nice features like wireless Apple CarPlay. There's a decent size 
elbow box and of course a large panoramic sunroof. It's also a bit tighter in the back than the Merc. So a bit less space on the inside of the BMW at the back. There's a bit less leg room. Headroom is much tighter and you feel a bit more hemmed in. You are however sat a bit higher here and visibility out is a bit better too. You do get a couple of vents here lower down and like the Mercedes, two C-type USBs. Both cars offer wireless charging and electrically adjustable front seats amongst others. The more expensive BMW goes a step further with a larger size sunroof, 18-inch wheels, gesture control for the infotainment screen and wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Unique to the Mercedes, there's passenger seat memory, SIM-based connectivity and radar-based active brake assist which automatically applies the brakes if the car in front of you stops suddenly. While you do get a reversing camera on all models of the Illimo, some don't get reversing sensors and that's pretty odd. The BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe is the better driver's car. Performance is marginally stronger, it enjoys being driven at speed and the harder you push it, the nicer it feels from behind the wheel. Then the front seats are comfortable and it's well equipped. The BMW however at 42.3 lakhs for this M Sport is more expensive by around a lakh and a half. It doesn't feel particularly special on the inside, the ride is a bit stiff and there clearly is less space in the back. The Mercedes Alemo at 40.9 lakh doesn't quite drive with the verve and confidence of the BMW, but what the A-Class limousine is, is a more accomplished luxury car. The interiors are more upmarket and more sophisticated, there's clearly no more space in the back, the responsive engine and gearbox work well together, it rides like a big Mercedes, and the light steering and easy controls make it a breeze to drive in the city. And that in a nutshell is why it wins. Ready? Bola raha hu na main hum log PTC chalu karenge to aawaz aayega ye. Wo aap tumhara karu hum main. Ready? The compact luxury car back. First came the BMW Grand Coupe. आप इतना पीछे जाएंगे लास्ट टाइम आप यहाँ थे करेक्ट फाइल कट होना चाहिए। 